Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. You may know me as Michael Jordan's barber. Oh, that's right. He doesn't have any hair, but I do a great job. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to Northtown News Magazine, and I'm going to cut the Cook County budget. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. For the identity of the real Marty Levinson, please stay tuned to the Northtown News Magazine. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Back to that lemon light city, sweet home. Chicago. Two, two is four, 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 six. Come on, baby, now get your business place. Come on. Hi there, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine with the greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Avi Myers. Thank you, Marty. Avi Myers here, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of. Sonny Hirsch and myself, Sonny, our entire technical crew, dial us up on the World Wide Web at www.ntnm.org. You'll find alphabetical listings for all the guests who've been on the show. You can find the date. You'll find links to YouTube, the whole shot, where over 80,000 of you have watched shows. Thank you so much. Uh, CAPS, we're really big on CAPS, community policing, CAPS24.org. Maybe one of these days we'll actually get a police commander. In the 24th district, burglaries and robberies are up, while general index crime isn't. Burglary and robberies are very serious, and they are up. You need to go to your CAPS meeting. You need to find out what's happening. You need to talk to your police officers. There's a lot of other stuff going on, too, that I'm not going to get into right now, and the best way to find out what it is is go to your CAPS meeting. Throughout the rest of the city, call 311 to find out where your meeting is. Now, it is a pleasure to have um, about to become the three-term incumbent. <laughs> I guess I'm running for my third term, right? Of the uh, 13th District of Cook County. And we've been do concentrating so much on Cook County, it's not even funny. And then I've got um, well, several people that are in line for, that I met at the ISCC banquet that I, haven't, uh, that I haven't put on yet. Well, Commissioner Goodman is one of them, and I had Bridget Gaynor on recently. But we're talking about uh, Commissioner Larry Sufferton. How are Hi, you? Hi, Abby. How are you? And by the way, congratulations on the award that you got from the Illinois State oh, Crime Commission. Thank you very much. It was, uh, if they only known I didn't have any money, I, <laughs> but well, it was very nice of them, and, and I do thank them. And it was, it was a great banquet at a really nice event, and I want to thank Jerry Elsnore and um, everybody involved. Uh, thank you so much. Well, you know, th they have enough people with money. They have very few people who are out there working in the community like you are so I'm I know I, you know what I got to meet a whole bunch of people I, like I met Commissioner Goodman over there she was one of the people that was being honored um, uh, Senator Rodano I've had on before and we made contact to come on again Senator Cullerton told me he was willing to come on the show and um, well right now I'm trying to concentrate on candidates and the election and all the rest of it I don't think either one of those is well, going to have much of a contest see I think uh, we have enough candidates yeah you know in fact some races are going to have 14 candidates and Others may have only three or four, and I'm hoping I only have zero. Uh, just well, me. zero is a good number, and I haven't heard about anybody who's going to be running against you. So far, I haven't either, but we'll see. You know, there's still time. Um, but, you know, uh, the, the issues clearly that uh, are driving this election season are health care. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I was at Congresswoman Schakowsky's health care rally, but I couldn't get in because 1,300 people got there ahead really? of me. Really? Yeah. And there wow. Were, there were good three or four hundred people outside. Wow. And when I leave you tonight, I'm going to one over in Evanston, or uh, health care forum uh, uh, over at Fountain Square. But Who's, you know, uh, who's running that forum? Uh, MoveOn.org. Okay. We are uh, supporting the president and uh, our members of Congress and getting something done. But, you know, this, this month of August and now into September, health care, I think, is what the focus is going to be. And as a county commissioner, Who's involved in running a hospital system and a healthcare system? It's we need this, and we you know we're going to need a public option because 53 percent of our patients don't have any kind of insurance, and they're not going to get private insurance. I assure you. So we better have a public mm -hmm. option to help help them. And uh, so well, that's one thing I've always been in favor of. There's no question about it. And you know we're 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 taping this a uh, week after the death of uh, Ted Kennedy who was such a, uh, a fighter for health care, let's hope that the members of Congress can put together 
a health care bill when they go back. I just heard the president is going to address a joint session of Congress next week to try to help them uh, take all the five plans that are out there and bring them together into one. So let's, let's hope it works. I know you've had a great personal story of struggling with health insurance over the years. Right. And, and, and there yeah. are many people like you who are self-employed who find it difficult. And so we, we need to make sure that there are plenty of opportunities to make sure everybody has uh, their health care. No question. Now I'll let, I'll let you do the details of that. Speaking of, um, yeah, no, no, it's, I agree, it's very important, and that's the one, that, that has definitely been a strong issue with me for a long time. Matter of fact, even in college, um, the debate topic, the year that I, I took a debate class, was should the government adopt a comprehensive policy of national health care? And even though, of course, in a debate class, you've got to argue both sides of the issue, there was uh, no question I've always thought it was a good idea. And if every other country, in the, virtually every other country in the world can do it, I don't understand why this country does it. Well, it's very difficult to understand with our positive experience with Medicare. And I don't think there's any senior I know who won't tell you that Medicare works for it's them. It's a godsend. But, uh, you know, that, that we resist doing this. I mean, we spend so much money and so much of it doesn't go into the quality care. And there's so many people who are just without care. So let's hope that we can come up with a plan because, frankly, the county cannot afford to continue to subsidize with huge dollars health care that really is a national issue. Um, no, the county's definitely got problems that way. You know what, one of the um, questions I asked a guest last week, um, Alderman Preckwinkle, who's running for Cook County Board President, is I brought up your, the, the uh, for people that don't know, the, over, the, over, the, the board that oversees uh, on health care at right. Cook County is, is basically, that was your idea and, and that's been implemented. Um, how do you think that's going and, and what do you see going on with that in the future? Well, I think it's going very well. We, we've, uh, within the last two months, hired the first health trained uh, academic administrator who is now running the, uh, the system, Bill Foley, who had been the CEO of Provina and then of a, a small county hospital in California. And Warren Batts, who's the chairman of the board, and the other members continue to put in phenomenal amounts of hours. And there's been this, this tremendous cash flow turnaround because they are now billing people. They are figuring out how we can get paid for the services we're providing from various governmental programs. And it's working. And the Obama administration has been very helpful in getting us um, uh, programs that tie right into the kind of patients we have. So I'm very optimistic that Stroger Hospital, Provident Hospital, Oak Forest Hospital, and, and the 16 clinics we run are finally performing at, at a level we can be proud of as citizens. Very good. Very good. That I'm glad to hear. And um, so you, you definitely, the, 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 the board should continue and... Uh, Absolutely. I hope that we will, right after the primary, be able to extend the life of the board. Oh currently. yeah, I should have pointed out that it's only through the end of this particular term. It, it's three years that uh, yeah. they have, so we have three, two years left. But I think we'll be able to to extend it uh, soon. I think you know um, the healthcare side of the county is going well. Um, I'm very grateful that we have Sheriff Tom Darch. You know, he's yeah. done a phenomenal job at Burr Oak Cemetery and uncovering. Yeah, things. and by the way, I just want to say too, uh, and he's the guy that uh, nominated me for the I in the Illinois State Crime Commission Award, and thank you very much. And he's just been so busy with Baroque, and his wife had a very difficult pregnancy. And uh, I think it was their fifth child, and yes. I think the five are like under seven years of age. So yeah, so he's he's a little busy. And, yeah, it's it's kind of he lives on the far south side, and we're on the far north side. But uh, we're looking forward to having you on again soon, uh, Sheriff. <laughs> and and Sheriff, it is the same Western Avenue that runs by Hobby's house as well as your house. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It definitely is. That is the long. I don't know if it still is, but at one time it was the longest street in the world. I, I, you know, I hear North Avenue is that now because you can go from Lake Michigan to the Mississippi, but uh, really, yeah, it might be the longest street within Chicago. Yeah, but because uh, at one time I'm serious, it was actually in the Guinness World Record Book of World yeah. Records as the longest street in the world. Of course, in Evanston, you guys have to call it Asbury, so that ends it there. Well, <laughs> but and, and Asbury. Uh, basically ends at the yeah. lake. But, uh, you know, it, it Western Avenue also extends into the suburbs and the uh, mm -hmm. way into the far south suburbs. Yes, it does. So, but Tom Dart is doing a great job. She, he has been working uh, to, uh, with the Shackman Decree to make sure that the, he's depoliticizing the, the workforce in the sheriff's office. Uh, 
He is uh, working very hard uh, at the jail to uh, make sure there's adequate health care and that people are taken care of and trying to get us out from under what they call the Duran Decree, which is the federal court monitoring our, our jail. And so I'm very impressed by the work that Tom's doing. And I know you had Anita Alvarez on. Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, just and, two uh, weeks ago. And you know, nobody can appreciate a, a, a person like the one who ran against them. And I ran <laughs> against Anita Alvarez, and I think she's doing a very good job as state's attorney. And I hope that she's enjoying the job. Um, she, yeah, you know, she was all smiling. Of course, uh, for those who didn't see it, maybe I'll put it on the beginning of the show. She brought the official ribbon cutting um, um, scissors for the high on Marty Levinson, which is this long and weighs probably close to 20 pounds. <laughs> well, and the real Marty Levinson uses equipment like that, I understand. Uh, I, the, that, uh, you know what? The first time he did the bit for me, he, it was a hedge trimmer, electric hedge trimmer. <laughs> uh, no, no, that, that, that's called a, 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 a an ear trimmer. Ah. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, Hi, Marty. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Jim Houlihan, our yeah. Cook County assessor, is yeah. going to retire. He's announced he's not going to run for re-election. I'm actually kind of sorry to see that. Jim has been, I think, a great assessor. Yeah. As you know, we've done a lot of work, and we've talked to a lot of people here about their property tax assessments, and we've appealed for a lot of people. And the website that he's put together has photos and data on houses like we've never had before. So we're going to miss uh, Jim Houlihan being the... Um, uh, assessor, and I wish him well in all the things that he does. As we're talking here today, um, uh, the Republicans uh, nominated uh, for assessor the woman who's been the Evanston Township assessor, who we beat last April, but she stays in office till next January because of a quirk uh, in, in really? the law. Yeah, so it, it's kind of a, a, a funny thing that that's who the Republicans would pick, somebody that Evanston rejected. But uh, it looks like <laughs> Joe Berrios is going to be the Democratic nominee, uh, uh, though there are some, uh, the assessor of uh, Oak Park is looking at it. Yeah. Well, he should, he, I can't see him not winning, period. I mean, he's just, he's a very powerful person. He's very popular in a lot of circles. Well, and Hispanic voters are, are uh, growing in number, and as Anita Alvarez showed, Hispanic voters can do it. But yeah, we'll, see, we'll yeah. have to wait until we see all the candidates. It, it, unlike Lieutenant Governor, where I think that the last report there were 10 candidates running for Lieutenant Governor. Oh, I don't know all 10. Uh, yeah. we, on on we only have four mm. potentially running for Governor on the Democratic side. You know, you've got Quinn uh, and Hines. Yeah. Then you've got Senator Claiborne from Southern Illinois and yeah. Representative Franks, uh, who yeah. would be the first Jewish candidate for uh, uh, governor in a, in, a, in a while. Well, actually, Sam Shapiro, but he, he Sam was Shapiro appointed. was governor. Yeah, but he, but he, was, he, he wasn't elected. He yeah. was a lieutenant governor and moved up when Otto Kerner became a federal judge. Oh, and Henry Horner. Uh, and Henry Horner earlier. But because yeah. uh, uh, Edwin there's a Eisendrath, who, camp that's named after uh, Edwin him. Eisendrath, who ran against uh, Bogoyevich four years who ago. Who I strongly supported. Uh, uh, you know, would have been. But So Jack, I know, is out there thinking about this. So yeah. we, we're going to have to see how all this stuff... Uh, yeah. plays out with all these candidates and uh, Jesse White I was with him last week at the Evanston community picnic and he came and he did head headstands and let the kids dive through his legs I mean here, here is a guy is in phenomenal shape and uh, oh and by the he way can, he'll be on next week's show yeah. just so you, I mean it's actually the taping two weeks from now but he will be on next week's show well and, and as you know from the history of the Cubs he should have been the Cubs center fielder in 1969 uh, it was a fluke that let Don Young get ahead of him in the minors. <laughs> and and uh, Jesse spent that year in AAA. And had he been playing for the Cubs that year, I think the Cubs would have had their first world championship. Interesting. I always, You know what? I never really looked up his record, even though I have the old, old who's who's in baseball yeah. and the baseball register from the Sporting News. But I, I thought he was a shortstop. But then again, my memory... Uh, well, he was a great third baseman yeah. in, in high school and in college. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he, they moved him into the outfield, and he was a great center fielder. Uh, oh, yeah, because I basically had, you know, because I know at one time they were looking at him at shortstop, but then the Cubs got this guy, Ernie, somebody. Well, er, Ernie was a little <laughs> bit, is a little bit older than, uh, than, than Jesse. Uh, Jesse often says that, but I think Jesse's oh, time would have been. you know what, you're right, been. because I know how Ernie Banks was born in 1931, in January, I believe, right. which means he's 78 years old. Right. And yeah, Je that's, he's, that's right. He's ten years older than Jesse White. Right. And so <laughs> uh, you know, I'm talking 1969, which would have been Banks uh, retired after the '70 season. Yeah, Banks. That was Banks was 38 that year, and um, and I think 
Bernie might have played another year or two, but yeah. but not at quite at that high as high a level. And Jesse White would have been uh, twenty seven or twenty eight that year approximately. But he was he was a great a great ball player and is just a great person. But so nobody's running against him. Nobody's running against Lisa Madigan. I don't think she's doing headstands and letting the tumblers uh, <laughs> dive over her. But the, you know she is out there and 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 doing things. Uh, for Comptroller, we have Robin, uh, or, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah, for Comptroller, we have David Miller running, who is a uh, state representative from the far south oh, side. I of actually Cocon. had a cousin by that name, but I don't think it's the same guy. Uh, <laughs> and I think he'll, he'll do, uh, do well. And for Treasurer, we have Robin Kelly, who's a former state representative from the far south side, who is uh, going to uh, uh, be, uh, she's now the, the deputy treasurer to Alexei Janulius. Yeah. And now we've got David Hoffman, the Inspector General, right. running that for the U.S. Really Senate. really was a surprise to me. Which, again, would be a, uh, a, a significant uh, race. He apparently uh, has a lot of resources and has some very good people backing him. Alexei Janulius, who I'm supporting, yeah. who, who I think is just an excellent person. And Cheryl Jackson is a very good lady who's been running the Urban League. Right. Uh, so that, that'll be an interesting uh, race. Uh, yeah, no quite. I mean, this is definitely shaping up as a, a hopefully it'll, you know, yeah, Jewish Chicago is going to have a lot to write about. Absolutely. And then you, you need to reach out to the 10th Congressional, where my office mate, Julie Hamos, is going to run for the uh, as congressional an, as seat as up there of fact, against Dan Seals. Um, Julie has an invitation mm -hmm. to the next two tapings. I haven't heard back. I did have her on for the first time in many years mm -hmm. when she basically announced that she'll be, she will be she was leaving to, to look for a different office to run right. for. And she did an excellent Marty Levinson, by the way. Well, <laughs> she also has great hair, which I'm sure Marty has cut. Uh, That's true. But uh, and, and the, 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 the no, Marty doesn't do women's hair. <laughs> the, va the vacancy for her seat has attracted a large number of people. There's speculation Joe Moore, the alderman of the 49th Ward, is going to run. Right, he's supposed to make up his mind this, yeah. this weekend as yeah. we film. Yeah. Jeff Smith. Uh, who the used frugal to be, gourmet? No, not the frugal <laughs> gourmet. Well, he's the, kind of dead. Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, literally. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, but uh, the, the Jeff Smith, who had been the state central committeeman, right? Two really uh, interesting young guys. A lawyer named Eamon Kelly, who's at Jenner and Block. Who's I think a, he's Irish. Uh, I think he's Irish, <laughs> and he grew up in Evanston. Okay. Patrick Keenan Devlin, who I think might also be Irish. Yeah who was president of Good the student chance. body at uh, Northwestern four years ago, yeah. and is uh, really an exceptional guy. There's a law professor, Larry Singer, who right. teaches at Loyola University, who's looking at running for it. There is um, a, a woman named Robin Gable, who is going to be the, maybe the only woman in the race, which could present an interesting uh, dynamic. And then there's a former Evanston alderman, Eb Moran, running for it. That's about 10 people. It's a lot of people. Then in the other seat, the other house seat that's in Jeff Schoenberg's district, we've got uh, uh, Daniel Biss, who's going to run for that again. He right, won that I saw. He came. He, he, and he, he, we thought he was going to have opposition from Debbie Carton, an alder uh, uh, trustee in the village of Glenview, but she decided not to run. And of and course, uh, in, in, in incumbent Beth Colson isn't there. Beth Colson has announced she's going to run for Congress in the 10th. Yeah. So that opens up her side, and, and they're talking about one of my mayors, uh, Chris Canning, the mayor of Wilmette, oh. running for state representative. So, you know, th th in the next few months, uh, you and Jim Nally and your panel of experts are going to have a lot of candidates to interview. And, and by and the way, you got to, you got to um, you got to be the panel of experts last time, right? Because Jim was in uh, Boston. Um, at a wedding, family yeah. wedding, which, which, and thank you very much. And by the way, I want to welcome you back. You know what? I, I want to tell you, I need somebody to be giving me these political rundowns, so you're going to get invited a lot before the election. Okay. Because I definitely, no, I, I'm telling you, I, it, it's just necessary. It's good for people to hear the whole rundown of the races, and I appreciate that. Well, we, we didn't even, haven't even started to talk about judges. No. Every place no. I go now, there's somebody with a petition wanting you to sign for them to run for judge. I was going to be asking you about this. Well, yeah. we have two vacancies in the Ninth Sub-Circuit, which right. we, we're in right now. And uh, one, Michael Bender's appointed to, is a resident of Lincolnwood. The right. other, Yehuda Libovitz, is appointed to, and yeah. he, he is a resident of Lincolnwood. Right. Former trustee in Lincolnwood. Uh, and you have just uh, Abby Romanik, who's uh, running yeah, Steve Abby Bernstein. Abby Fishman Romanik, right. Right. Okay. Uh, Steve Bernstein. He's resigning from Alderman in order to run he, for judge, he, he, and his he, wife is right, a judge. Right, and so he is out there. 
I, I met uh, a, a woman, Deborah uh, uh, Ballman, I don't know uh, her. Who, who's running uh, last week. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of people running uh, for I'll judge. I'll add Dennis Fleming to the mix, too, by the way. Who's well, the, uh, Dennis Fleming, I heard, and there's a fellow named Gary Cull, who was appointed by the Supreme Court to a circuit judgeship who's going to run in our sub-circuit. There is a, a fellow named Bill Jackson who was appointed a, a judge who's going to be running somewhere. He lives in uh, in Wilmette, but uh, has contacts here in Rogers Park. By the way, there's also a chance that you could be appointed because he's on the short list for associate. Associate judge. We can yeah. only hope that that works out for him. So, so and, and then we've got appellate court vacancies. Jim Epstein, who's a wonderful jurist, is thinking of running for the appellate court. And you have Sebastian Patty who is a, a wonderful representative of uh, lawyers and active in the uh, gay community who has just been appointed to the appellate court and he'll be running. Yeah. So interesting races all these all around. A lot of interesting races and uh, yeah, it'll be, I mean, I'm not even inviting, at this point, you know, like I'm switching strictly to politics and this, I, I think I'm gonna have a policeman or two on, on the show because we, we have had situations in the neighborhood that uh, really require us to, to discuss the police stuff because that's too important to the neighborhood. But for the most part, from here through election time, it's politics here. Well, I just got a new seatmate yesterday on the county board. When, when Commissioner Maldonado was appointed mm -hmm. to become Alderman Maldonado, there was a vacancy. And uh, Eddie Reyes was appointed, and he is a sitting, a, 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 uh, today, a Illinois State Trooper, Trooper, yeah, and who is now going to be on the county board? So I feel like I have a policeman next to me now all the time to give me <laughs> advice. And, and by the way, uh, <coughs> another new mate of yours who took over from Mike Quigley, although not quite as new because you're already a very familiar and have co-sponsored events with her, Bridget Gaynor. Right, good person. Uh, has been on the show, and I was very impressed with her. Yes, yeah, she's a hard worker, and she uh, she really is very knowledgeable. Has a lot of experience mm -hmm. in government. And, uh, Oh, by, by the way, she was also mentioned off the ear here, too, by several people um, during the show. Oh, you know who? Dean Kirk, Anita Alvarez's yeah, right. uh, chief of staff, really thinks the world of her. Right, and uh, uh, we're, we're going to have another new member. Uh, just yesterday, John Fritchie announced he's leaving the General Assembly after 14 yeah. years, and he's going to run for the commissioner's seat that Forrest Claypool currently holds. So uh, we should have in the next uh, group of uh, commissioners a, a lot of... Uh, new people and it ought to be kind of interesting. That would be good and I don't think there's any question but uh, I, it, it's going to be very hard for there not to be a new president. To, to well I, I see no way that Todd Stroger can win. You know yesterday I sponsored the override of his veto of the uh, a half a point of the sales tax. It's the third time he's vetoed our reducing the sales tax and we had 14 votes when we started the meeting and somehow he convinced Commissioner Sims to change yeah. her mind. I think she turned her back on the people of Cook County and definitely the people of her district. She did. There's and no I question. think she and Todd Stroger do not deserve to even be considered for re-election. Yeah. I, um, well, you know what? I'm not endorsing anybody yet, so I'm holding. Because I have to interview everybody still, so I really have to well, be. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, you're a journalist. I'm, I'm a politician. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, well, no, no, I, I understand. And I, I think it's going to, I do, I, it's fair to say it's going to be very difficult for him. And I can't understand how people aren't going to be looking for her. Because you know what, it just—I don't know where her district is exactly, but you know, South I know this, suburbs on the know. Will County line. So, so people are going to be jumping to Will County like crazy over right, there, right? And a lot of the people are too poor to go across the line, so they're going to have to pay the higher sales tax. Yeah, we're having enough. Although this isn't a county thing, we're having enough problems in this neighborhood, for instance, with uh, uh, with the parking meters that it's driving business outside the uh, city. And uh, uh, we don't have parking meters anymore. We have. Pay boxes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's remember that parking meters are something our children and grandchildren will ask us about, and maybe we should try to buy <laughs> one of these so we can have it as an artifact. But you know, it's the pay box, and find you know, the pay we, box, and all you got to do is put your credit card in and let it charge anything at once, and then it gives you a little slip of paper, and you can park. But there will always be cool hand Luke to remember parking meters. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right. I and. I, uh, you know, I walk around now with uh, my rolls of quarters yeah. because how else can one live in the city of Chicago and get around? Well, at least in Evanston, well, where I we walk. take dimes and nickels. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, when my office was in Evanston, they used to take pennies too. Yeah, well, we're well beyond the penny stage for any of these parking situations. Well, not even the government could print a penny for a penny. Right. <laughs> right. Or coin a penny for a penny. Right. So that just doesn't work anymore, not at all. So um, tell people the boundaries of your district. Uh, basically, I represent from Lake Cook Road to Devon and the lake to Harlem. There are a couple little cutouts in there, but that's pretty much it. So I represent 
49 and 50th wards in the city of Chicago, the townships of Evanston, Niles, New Trier, Northfield, and a little piece of Maine Township. So it's, it's a 320,000 people. It's yeah. a lot of people. It's very diverse. 73 languages spoken yeah. as, the, as the primary language in homes in that, in that area. We have everything, as you know, uh, you go down Devon Avenue, you see the Croatians, the Bosnians, the Pakistanis, the Indians, and, and the Russians, that, that the Russians, Jews. It just keeps it just keeps going and going. Yeah. More Arabs too. Uh, <laughs> people, Palestinians from everywhere in the world. One of the great things about Rogers Park yeah. is that it has always been one of the most welcoming communities yeah. in the city of Chicago. And the difference between East and West Rogers Park, I think, is it's been that East Rogers Park with more apartments has really given people that first starter home. And That's as they true. do as they do better, they move farther west. Yeah, yeah the, when, when I was growing up in, in this neighborhood in West Rogers Park, basically it was college East Rogers Park was college students and the elderly. Yeah. And yeah, yeah people look at looking to be on their way up. By the way, um, I will say that we have much more Indian, Pakistani, and kosher restaurants, and Rogers Park's starting to get an interesting influx of African restaurants. Right. Oh yes, and and Jamaican restaurants. Yeah. Uh, one of the things though that I do lament that we've lost in the neighborhood though yeah. is flukies. Oh, you know, Fluky and Wolfie's were cousins, and so uh, the Fortieth Ward has Wolfie over yeah. on Peterson. Well, Wolfie outlasted Fluky. Uh, his, I found out what his rent was. His rent was just about nine, a little, a shade under nine thousand dollars a month. Not bad if you can get it. Yeah. Well, um, the trouble is that Larry. A lot of dogs. Larry's a nice guy. He still owns uh, Max's. Um, yeah. uh, but and, and the place I do a lot of my printing is right next door. That's how I run into Larry. Well, and it's he always a shame. he always he had a free, he had an open house Thanksgiving morning where he fed people for free everybody who right. came in. Well, and, and, and you know you mentioned Alan Griman earlier before we started yeah. the show when Alan Griman was the state representative, he held his uh, uh, fundraisers yeah. at Flukies. Interesting. And Fluky put together a special uh, chocolate mousse. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and it, it, it was always whatever Alan weighed. You gave him a penny a pound, or, or a dollar a pound. I That's remember a, that, as yeah, a matter of fact. Yeah, I right, remember yeah, that. Right, yeah. And he's a pretty big guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, now retired from the appellate court and helping his wife, Julie Amos, run in the 10th. Oh, I th wasn't he appointed judge? Did he retire from that? He retired, yeah. He's now a mediator in private practice and doing well. Wow, then I'm this glad This is kind of like we're just reminiscing about all the people we've known. I like years, Alan yeah. Graham a lot. As a matter of fact, you know what? I, I got friendly with him again through your uh, old July 4th... Uh, Picnics, which right. which your wife wanted to shoot you for, but uh, not shoot you. But you know what? You can't have it. It's it was in the hard park. to tell you. You got five hundred people that are in, in your front yard, and that they can't use your washroom. <laughs> and wives don't. And that's uh, true because it was in a public park that didn't have um, didn't have any kind of facilities. facilities yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, the last time I was, I think the last time you had it, um, nobody wanted to talk to Dick Durbin, who was there for the July Fourth parade in Evanston. And I wound up talking with them for 35 minutes, which was great, I loved it. Well, there were a lot of people who were saying, who's that guy monopolizing Dick Durbin over there? But, <laughs> but that's okay. We, yeah. By the way, you know, it's funny because Jewish Chicago actually championed him the first time around when he ran against Paul Finley downstate. And Paul Finley, in his book, blamed Jewish Chicago, my paper, um, for, among others, for his defeat. Well, let us remember that Paul Finley's book was a thousand pages long, yeah. and each page had a different person he blamed for his defeat. <laughs> and I, I, I know you were in there, but you know, n page nine ninety nine isn't like being on page one. No, that's true. But you know what? I'm, I am more than I am more than pleased to have participated. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. No, there's no question. Listen, there's only so many Jewish folks. You know, the funny thing is that there were no Jews and there's no Arabs in that, in that district. But the fact of the matter is that, that that's Finley where the money made, came from. Paul, Paul Finley made the issue uh, being supportive of the Arabs uh, in, in a way that was really somewhat obnoxious. It's too bad because, you know, I, I don't think an American politician should be that partisan as he had become. No, that, there's no no question. In any event, I think you should give people your contact information because Mickey you, and Sands are getting Right. There. You know, we, we're uh, in Evanston at 820 Davis. I share an office with Congresswoman Schakowsky, Senator Jeff Schoenberg, Representative Julie Hamos, State Representative Julie Hamos, soon to be Congresswoman. And we're 820 Davis, and our phone number is 847-864-1209. And Karen Chavers, who's my office manager up there, would be more than happy to sit down and, and greet you. So take care, and uh, thank you very much for having me on thank the show. Thank you, and thank you. I've dealt with Karen. Karen is terrific. Thank you very much, Sonny. Commissioner Larry Suffordan, thank you so much. Bye, everybody.